Good morning and welcome to worship with the Forest Grove United Church of Christ. Welcome into the joy of the Spirit and the open, loving arms of God. Welcome to this place where we are growing in the wisdom and love of Jesus. Where we are on a journey toward liberation and welcoming a just world for all. Where because of who you are and where you are on your life's journey, we know we have so much to learn from you. And so we greet you as God's beloved and say to you, the light of Christ in us sees and celebrates the light of Christ in you. Welcome to this sacred hour of worship. Good morning, everybody. Before we pray, I just want to remind us that we're all welcome to fellowship hour immediately following this service on this same Zoom link. I also want to draw our attention to the announcements and remind us that Monday is the deadline to RSVP to Christie for the June 4th hike. So please do so so we get to have that wonderful opportunity of being together and hiking in nature for, for a morning in the Columbia River Gorge. And it sure is beautiful out there this time of year. It is truly God's country. So let's go be in it together. Uh, I also want to uh, draw our attention to um, how I have started hosting community office hours on Wednesday afternoon. And I've seen some of you and we've been, uh, it's been a great time to visit together and to be together. Also on June 27th, uh, there will be an all church cleanup and this will be a great in this season of pentecost this season when we're sent out to be the church to bring the beauty and the blessings of heaven to the world around us we are going to bring our trash picker upper tools along with us in that effort uh, to make the world around us more beautiful particularly main street so let's all join together in these uh, great upcoming efforts I also, as I share uh, another invocation to the Holy Spirit from St. Hildegard of Bingen, a 13th century mystic, I wanted to credit her. The past few weeks as we've been moving through this series on the Divine Feminine uh, and the Holy Spirit in this season of Pentecost, I have been using uh, Hildegard of Bingen's invocations to the Holy Spirit for the peace candle prayers. So I can't take uh, credit for the beautiful poetic prayers we've been opening our worship with. That would be St. Hildegard of Bingen. And interestingly enough, uh, thank you for that correction. Uh, yes, let's all, uh, Ken Prickett reminded us that the hike is June 5th. Saturday is June 5th, not the 4th. So let's all refer to the announcements uh, and double check those details. So thank you, Ken, for that uh, correction there. Um, I'm responding to something I saw in the chat. Back to Hildegard, I just wanted to let us know, interestingly enough, Hildegard uh, was a visionary who made beautiful icon paintings, iconographic paintings of spirit and the universe, and she portrayed God as an egg at the center of the universe, so the source from which all life emerges, and we've heard God a lot about God as birthing source uh, throughout this month. So here in this season of Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, our birth through the Holy Spirit, uh, the birth of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, um, let us hear another beautiful invocation to the Holy Spirit from St. Hildegard of Bingen. And so we gather around our candle of peace, let us pray. Fire of the Spirit, life of the lives of all creatures, spiral of sanctity, bond of all nature, glow of love, lights of clarity, taste of sweetness to those who have fallen away. Be with us and hear us composer of all things, light of all the risen, key of liberation, release from the dark prison, hope of all unions, 
scope of all joys and glory, strong honor, be with us and hear us. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to lift up uh, ongoing prayers this morning for Ralph. We continue to lift up uh, the hope and the vision of Ralph's safe return, and we give thanks for all the ways the community continues to come together to search for Ralph. I went to Astoria and back on Saturday and looked around, and I it was touching to see fl flyers of Ralph in storefronts and gas stations in so many different places uh, along the way. And it's so clear that so many people who love Ralph are coming together in this effort to make sure that his image, his face, is out there, uh, and that uh, we find him and that he return home safely and soon. And so we continue to pray for Ralph and also Carol as she recovers from back surgery. And we pray for her family and continue to wrap them in our care, our love, and our support. I'd also like to lift up prayers for Tori Eaton this morning, who had unexpected gallbladder surgery, but Tori is recovering from that. And so she also appreciates our prayers and support at this time. And so as we come now to our time of prayer, I just invite us to arrive in our bodies, open our hearts, be receptive to the presence of spirit within and all around us. And let's take one deep breath in and one deep breath out as we center ourselves in prayer.
Let us pray. Creative power beyond the stars, Christ in the depths of the earth, Holy Spirit and breath of life within and all around us, we anchor ourselves in your presence. We come fully alive in your presence, your transcendent and eternal peace as we lift up to you our prayers. We draw our awareness to the spark of your presence, the spirit within. On this Memorial Day, we especially remember all those who have died in wars. Whatever the war, we remember every soldier on every side, remembering they were all some mother's child. We remember all civilians who died in war. We acknowledge and honor that all those who went to war did so with the intention of ending oppression and defending others. Let us honor their courage and intentions by living and working for a world without war. We lift up prayers to all of our departed warriors and realms of light to come to the aid of all humanity at this time when our world is so ravaged by war that they may help us end all violence and all war. We ask that God touch the community of San Jose with peace, this community that has been rocked by yet another mass shooting. We pray for peace and dem democracy throughout the Holy Land, where just in these recent weeks we have witnessed the killing of 242 civilians, 63 of them children, thousands injured, and tens of thousands displaced. You have made us to be better than this, O oh God. And so we ask for your spirit and your angels to guide us. We pray that our departed warriors and realms of light, along with the Holy Spirit of God, who says they will destroy all those that destroy the earth, also be a shield of protection around the nonviolent activists defending the old growth trees of British Columbia and other places where the Canadian government has made it legal to shoot earth defenders in recent weeks. We pray for the Holy Spirit of God to sur surround the tree of life and all who gather around it in impenetrable glory and light. Let there be an end to war, O God, of perfect justice and peace and help us to live in a way that future generations will look back on each one of us, and remember all of us as the ones who planted the seeds of peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Creative Power, Grandfather, Universal Mother in whom is heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Gospel of St. John is uh, one of the most memorable in the Old New Testament. Uh, it contains probably a, a quotation that is a trivia question answer. Try uh, John 11.35. And also the scripture that we probably had to learn first of all 
during our Sunday school years. And that's contained in this week's reading. From John 3, 1 to 17. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, who no one else can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, and yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you did not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into the heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the center in the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. There ends the reading. Good morning. This morning we are talking about being born of the Spirit. So as we begin, I invite us to just place our hands over our hearts. And you can clo your, close your eyes and notice the breath of life as you breathe it in and breathe it out. We now know that one of the names of the Holy Spirit, one of the feminine faces and names for God is Ruach, means, meaning breath of life. So as you breathe in and breathe out, I invite you to envision a gentle flame, a simple candlelight representing the spirit glowing in your heart. And as you breathe in, feel this flame as all the love in your life around you and in all the universe glowing within you, being nurtured within you. As you breathe in, notice and feel its warmth. Now imagine what it would be like to be born anew through such a spirit, through this warmth, through the door of the heart, this, this moment and in every moment. God of life and flame of the spirit, we ask that these words in this reflection water the seed of the spirit within us, that together we all grow to be big trees of the spirit for our world, carrying your warmth, your light, your perfect justice, your perfect love and peace to each other and the world around us. Bless the speaking and the hearing of these words and the silent spaces in between. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus was born from above. In our very midst, the wisdom, the love, and the spirit that transcends the turmoil of this broken and aching world emerges and becomes flesh. This is the truth our faith invites us to live out. John's Gospel begins with the telling of Jesus' birth, saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word, the word was with God, and the Word was God. Throughout this month, while focusing on the Divine Feminine, we have learned that this word that John speaks of, along with Sophia, Holy Wisdom, the Woman of Wisdom, and Spirit, all act as synonymous terms and references in scripture and tradition. John speaks of her, the Holy Spirit, as our shared source and origin with Christ. In the beginning, is this indwelling presence and breath of life. In the beginning is this let there be light. In the beginning is love, and that love is with God, and that love is God. Into a land tormented and besieged by callousness and greed, by violence and war and empire, Jesus is born among the most downtrodden peoples into a world of chaos, hatred, and death, we are told the Spirit is born and made flesh to illuminate the new world and ever unfolding presence of heaven in its place. We can also remember how in this context, the very name of Jesus's mother, Mary, in Hebrew, means rebellion. We've heard this before. So with this in mind, we can hear that through the very womb of rebellion against tyranny and oppression, through the womb of the woman of wisdom declaring justice for the poor, the Spirit of God is born and made flesh among us. The word virgin is used commonly throughout the Bible simply to refer to a woman of the age of being married or an unmarried woman. Through Mary, this sovereign woman of wisdom, this rebellion of the spirit, the body of Christ is given to the world, nurtured by her blood and spirit. The conception of Christ was not immaculate because Jesus was somehow born without sex or without desire and love. We need not cling to propaganda that really was invented to oppress women and deny the sacredness of the body and eros and assert control. The conception of Jesus is called immaculate because of the spirit that birthed Christ as the new humanity through mother rebellion. Jesus indeed comes to invite us to be born from above in, that, in this way as well. Born of this same spirit, just like him. He comes to initiate us as his brothers and sisters and relatives, as people born from above to cast off the injustice and evil of this world as we know it. To live in this world as ones born of the Holy Spirit. We get to be nurtured in the womb of that love and birthed as a new humanity from that spirit. Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born? The Pharisee asks Jesus, mystified. Jesus says to him, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. <clears throat> As people born of spirit, Jesus calls us to be more than the violence and oppression we're conditioned to accept. As people born of spirit, we are invited to not hold ourselves accountable merely to the world's status quo, but to the justice and peace above the world, the vision of the spirit transforming the world around us into the realm of God. The Apostle Paul describes this saying how we are empowered to be more than conquerors, more than conquerors, he says, through deathless love. Ignorance and division and violence and death need not be our destiny.
the good news tells us. As people born from above, we can live as the body of Christ. We can live as living spirits, as sparks of the divine. We can live as agents of a new humanity, activated in the work of transforming the world. When I think of what it means to be born from above, I can't help but remember the wisdom expressed to me from a Palestinian woman I met in Jerusalem in 2011 on a trip to the Holy Land with a group called Sabil, which in Arabic means the way. And they are the Ecumenical Palestinian Liberation Theology Center of Jerusalem. I met this woman, woman in a Palestinian women's cooperative as she was stitching the words, we shall overcome, onto a stole. We got talking of all I had seen on my long tour. She shared with me her experience of what she described as the daily horror of living under military occupation. We shed tears together, but she also said to me, you know, I want you to know that I am not without hope because I still believe Christ is the human heart for God. And through all the people throughout this world with a heart for God, a heart for justice, a heart for love, the world can be changed. She spoke of what we all could be if only we allowed ourselves to be more than conquerors. As she spoke, I could reflect, I was able to reflect on all the people with human hearts for God whom I had met on my journey, and they seemed, in the light of her words, as though born from above, amidst the wreckage of the conquered, war-torn landscape all around them. In the midst of that land, they offered glimpses and hope of the realm of God emerging. But the Holy Land, my friends, was indeed scarred by all the ways we have acted as nothing more than conquerors for far too long. We have been told that Israel was a land without a people for a people without a land, but that is simply not the case. Prior to 1948, Palestinian Jews, Christians, Muslims, and various other Palestinian ethnic groups traveled freely and lived in relationship to the land and each other for hundreds of years. Along with much of the rest of the world, the English had colonized the region up until 1918, and along with other Western powers, helped draw the border that would become the original 1948 border of the State of Israel in historic Palestine. We can lament, and as Christians, I do think we must repent of the centuries of persecution and trauma inflicted on the Jewish people and how the resulting trauma led to the expulsion of the Jews from Europe and the resulting desire for separatism on the part of some Jewish people. We can also acknowledge how any state that enforces only one group of only one ethnic group be allowed to live within its borders can only be maintained through ethnic cleansing and apartheid and today in historic palestine we see a snaking ever expanding militarized wall that divides people on one side of the wall israel exists as an ethno state with a jewish majority enforced by law and on the other side of that wall, the Palestinians, who have since 1948 survived under military occupation with resident absentee cards on their own land. They continue to be systematically pushed off their ancestral homelands into ever shrinking parcel, parcels of land and communities that truly at this point resemble and function as open air prisons. It is yet to be seen if we will ever be more than conquerors. And yet in this tragic landscape, scarred 
by our acting as conquerors. I witnessed those with a human heart for God, and I want to tell you about them this morning as we learn about what it means to be born of the Spirit. If you go to Haifa, you will meet the women in black. Every Friday for decades, this group of Jewish women have observed Shabbat by standing at the crossroads of the city in silent protest, holding candles and signs that read, End the Occupation. I stood, I stood there with one of them. She had a heart for God. She told me of how she had survived Auschwitz and was sent to Israel as a young woman when the camps were liberated. She said, I stand here because I vowed I would speak out if I ever saw what happened to us being done to anyone else. So I have to speak out for the Palestinians. I believe in a God of justice. As we stood with her, one of the many passers-by threw food at this woman and hurled a curse in her direction. The woman said to me, this is how they treat me, a Holocaust survivor in Israel. I think of the woman I met in the Shafat refugee camp I remember her showing me her exquisite traditional embroidery that expressed the character of the land formerly called Jaffa City, now called Tel Aviv, land where her family had lived for countless generations. She showed me the key she has kept to the house that she was expelled from by military force. It hangs by her door at the entrance to her home. She said to me, please tell the people in your country that funds the military that keeps us in refugee camps. I wish harm to no one. I simply want to go back to my home. I simply want to be able to travel freely in my land. And I believe in a world where we can all live together in peace, regardless of our race or our religion. Why should that be such a crazy idea? She asked. I think of the Rashmawi family and their hearts for God. Settlers from Brooklyn and Los Angeles have at several times tried to poison their well water. While we were with them, settlers set fire to their olive trees. I watched the olive trees burn. We were with the family along with a group of people from the Israeli Committee Against Home Demolition, helping, helping them rebuild their house. You see, the Rishmawis had their house bulldozed to the ground by the Israeli army several times as part of an effort to clear them and other Palestinians off their land to build more illegal settlements. One time, the house was bulldozed with the mother and son still inside it. Nevertheless, the Rishmawi family surrounds their olive grove and their simple and humble property that they've always inhabited with signs that read, we refuse to leave and we refuse to be your enemies. We refuse to be your enemies, they say. And when I think of this human heart for God, how could I forget the wedding in Beth Sahor? The music that suddenly burst the quiet street to life. We were in a lecture in a church, but our, a guide, our, our, our guide immediately said, oh, a wedding, we must go. And so we walked outside and the bride and groom were beautifully dressed and they were being paraded through the street in a procession that seemed to in include the whole town. And we asked our guide, do you know them? And he said, of course not. But in Palestine, when there's a wedding here, everyone is invited. And we were swept into the dancing of the wedding in the public square. And I will never forget the little boy who ran up to us and, and took us by the hands to help us properly dance dubki. Dubki is the traditional Palestinian dance. And he pulled us right into the circle, shouting at us loudly, step, step, kick, step, step. And, and after some instruction and some tripping over ourselves, we all had the hang of it. And by the end of the night, together we were all a crowd from all over the world, Irish and English, Swedish and German and Polish and Americans and Canadians and Puerto Ricans and Cubans and Ghanaians. Christians, Jews, and Muslims. 
and everyone else in the square, all of us dancing in long, moving chains to the music. I will never forget how our young dance teacher at the end of the night said to me, you know, I know what they say to you about us in your country. We, we see your news here. But now you know I'm not a terrorist. Now you know we can all dance together. All these beautiful people that we met, living with human hearts for God, as though born from above when you look at the world around them and the world around us. And as we come to the end of our reflection series on the feminine faces of God, I wanted to share with us all the wisdom of the woman from Jerusalem. This wisdom that invites us to live with hearts for God, for a greater love, a greater justice, a greater spirit, a greater spirit that we can be born from. With hearts for God, we discover indeed that it's possible for us all to dance together. With hearts for God, we find it's impossible to be each other's enemies. With hearts for God, we find ourselves replanting the garden that we've all destroyed together, and we find ourselves tearing down the walls that divide us. With hearts for God, we discover the power to see the kingdom of God in glimpses, even among the filth of the racism and war and apartheid violence we see all around us. We can see the realm of God breaking through, but we must become more than conquerors. We must rest our hearts in the womb of the spirit and live as people born from above. Amen. Dear friends, in gratitude for the abundance of life and the ingratitude for all the possibilities of being born of the Spirit together, for being beloved community together and bringing community and justice and love to the world around us, for that incredible mission that we share together, for that incredible identity as people of spirit and truth. Let us, out of gratitude, give forth our offerings to support the life and the ministry of this church. Uh, we will now collect the morning offering. If you are making your offering by sending it in, I will post the address of the church in the chat. You can also make your offering online. However you're making your offering, I invite you to do so at this time as we hear some special music.
How wonderful to hear the choir singing together. That is so exciting. Oh, such beautiful voices. Thank you for that beautiful hymn. And it was such a joy to see everyone singing together after that not being possible till now for over a year. I just want to say hallelujah for that. That is wonderful. I also, uh, before saying the dedication prayer, I meant earlier to lift up uh, to two members, uh, two friends of our church in prayer, uh, please keep in your prayers Elaine Foy uh, and Elaine's wife, Nancy. Uh, Nancy is being treated for pneumonia. Uh, she is at home uh, and Elaine requested prayers. So let us, let's wrap Elaine and Nancy in our prayers of love and support and healing at this time. And forgive me for not mentioning them earlier in the prayers. I didn't want to let the service go through though without our praying for Elaine and Nancy. And so uh, in dedicating the offering, uh, I want to give thanks for the blessing of music, the joy of community, all that is possible through our coming together in the spirit that gives birth to us in love and in justice and in peace. And so I ask God that you send your Holy Spirit down on these gifts and each and every one of us we ask that you use all that we have and all that we are in your service and in the expansion of your spirit in this world. Amen. down to the ocean blue, river from a mountain high, river as you do what rivers do, river draw the spirit nigh, spirit come down to the the wondrous thoughts. Spirit, I am free for you to guide. Spirit, pray that I be taught. Water, let me drink of your healing power. Water, strength and life you give. Dear friends, as this service comes to conclusion, we are sent out on our journeys, as even as we continue being on a journey together. So as we leave, let us depart in the blessing and in the life of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And may we love God so much, we love nothing else too much. And may we fear her just enough, we need fear nothing else at all. Go in love. Amen.